Is the coronavirus pandemic a sign that the world has come to an end? What is the mark of the beast? Is it related to the 5G technology? Who is the Antichrist? Join Pastor Isaac Apao as he takes you through the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation to discover the truth behind the COVID-19, 5G and the mark of the beast. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Hello dear friends, welcome to Voice of Hope Media. This is a very special program where we want to discuss you know, current events in light of Bible prophecy. I am so glad that you have joined us today as we talk about this all-important uh, no topic concerning the times that we live in. Before we start, I want to say God bless you so much for your feedback. When we sent out the poster concerning this program, we have received so much, you know, questions from you. And it has helped us, you know, put together a message based on the Word of God that would help us understand the times that we live in so that we as Christians will know what to do. Listen, as Christians, we don't follow what is trending. We don't follow what has become popular. We don't follow what everybody is saying. Everybody is posting on Facebook and on WhatsApp. We only follow what the good book, that is the word of God, has to say. So when it comes to the current event, when it comes to what is happening in the world right now, we must always look at the Bible and understand what the Bible is saying concerning what is happening. Now we all know what is happening in the world. The world has been hit all of a sudden, unexpectedly, by a deadly you know, viral infection, the coronavirus, and it has caused so much fear and panic in the world. On top of that, there are so many theories coming out. And these theories, unfortunately, are promoted by non-Christians and some Christians as well, promoting theories connecting um, the coronavirus um, you know, pandemic with the end of the world, most especially with the mark of the beast, with the Antichrist, and also with the current 5G technology that is, you know, has, that has been introduced in the world and is gradually making its way to various parts of the world. So as Christians, we want to find out what does the Bible say or what has the Bible said concerning the times that we are living in. I want to be more specific. What has the Bible said concerning the current pandemic, the coronavirus outbreak? Is there anything in the Bible that suggests that in the last days, um, leaders of the world or politicians are going to kind of connect the world together through um, technology, more specifically the 5G technology that is coming out? Um, is the 5G related to the coronavirus and all that? Dear friends, we want to find out what the Bible says on this issue, not what is, is currently trending. Not what some people are saying. You may have heard other ministers or other pastors, popular pastors, preaching about these things. But listen, I am not here to talk about anybody's message. I am only here to present God's word to you. So what I want you to do is that I want you to follow this discussion with the word of God. Make sure that every test that I post out there, you write it down and then you research on your own to make sure that indeed it is found in the word of God. We would also make a call. We we'll have somebody who would be joining us very soon. And he is an expert in the telecommunication industry in Ghana here. He is going to be telling us more, a little bit about the 5G technology so that we understand um, all, all that we need to know about 5G. If it has any link with coronavirus and if indeed it has any link with the prophesied mark of the beast. My dear friend, the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We have received several questions from you. You know, we earlier on posted the, the ad for this particular program on Facebook and also on, on our WhatsApp pages, and we received a lot of questions. We wanted to know or find out what you think or what you, any questions you have concerning this particular topic. And we received a lot of them. I cannot mention or read all of them to you, but just to highlight a few which we'll be talking about in this presentation, 
one of the questions that we received a lot is, what is the 5G technology? Others were asking, is the 5G technology related to the mark of the beast? That is a 666. And some also wanted to know, has the mark of the beast started? Because there are a whole lot of you know, theories on the internet saying that the mark of the beast is the 5G technology that is coming out. So they want to know, is, has it started? We'll find out from the message, the presentation. How will the mark of the beast be? We'll find out. And this is another interesting question that we received a lot. And that is, is the mark of the beast a microchip or a digital ID? You know, this is something that we need to understand from the Bible. We would understand that from the Bible. If it indeed is a microchip or is going to be a digital ID or a barcode or whatever it is. Again, some are asking, is the 5G technology hazardous to our health? Is it connected to the coronavirus or not? We want to find that from the Bible. And also we find that soon from an expert in the telecommunication industry in Ghana here. What is the correlation between the National Sunday Law and the 666, which is the mark of the beast? We'll find out. And an interesting question here. Should those in the cities move to the villages? You know, this is something that um, some people have come to believe, that when these things begin to happen, when we begin to see some of these things, it is better you move to the villages. We'll find out if these things are, you know, so we need to do that. And then we also had a question saying, is the coronavirus connected to 5G? I think I've said that. Number 10, we, we, this question says, why do some of the face masks have 666 in it? Um, we'll look at it. We'll actually look at the mark of the beast in details from the Bible's point of view so that you understand what it is all, I mean, what it is in the first place so that some of these theories that are out there will not really worry you and all that. I really don't know and I have, I'm yet to see a face mask with 666 in it. Even if there is some, something like this out there, question is, is it the 666, is it the mark of the beast that the Bible talks about? And again, uh, we had a question saying, who is the Antichrist? We'll look at it. In fact, this is what we will start with. Because the Bible says that the Antichrist would have a mark, and the mark is 666. Before you can identify or understand the meaning of the 666, you need to identify who the Antichrist is. So if you don't know who the Antichrist is, it will be difficult for you to know what his mark is all about. So we'll look at this one first and foremost, then you understand the relationship between the mark of the beast, if there is in the first place, and also the 5G technology and the coronavirus and all that. The last question that we had, I mean, these are not the only questions that we had. We had a lot of questions, but most of them were related to what we have sampled here. Is the 5G what they are going to use to come out with a new world order? Recently, a very famous preacher in Africa, you, if you watch it, you know who I'm talking about, um, came out with a message that, you know, supposedly the, the leaders of the world have had this plan for all these years, and they, they actually, in their plan, decided that 2020 is the year they're going to execute it and they're going to come out with a new world order. And because of that, they are using coronavirus as a way to, to kind of um, cover what they are really doing behind, which is erecting 5G um, antennas all over the world. And we want to know from the Bible, is this really what the Bible says concerning the mark of the beast? My dear friends, before we get into our message and also listen to the telecommunication expert telling us all that we need to know, all your questions on the 5G technology. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much. The time has come for us to open your word. There are so many things that we are hearing. We are being bombarded with a lot of information on the internet. We want to know the truth. In these last days, what have you given us in the books of Revelation and Daniel that would help us to live without fear and also to live in hope knowing that you have everything in perfect control? Thank you so much for our answered prayer, for we have asked this in no other name, but in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, my dear friends, once again, I say God bless you for joining us. 
we'll be having an interaction with an expert in the telecommunication industry in Ghana very soon. But before we go there, I encourage you, we've just started a message, please click the share button. Encourage somebody also to be part of this. Let us send the truth all over Facebook so that people will know the truth and live with the truth to avoid being deceived with falsehood. God bless you for sharing and God bless you for being a part. Okay, so dear friends, just as I said, we have Mr. Adade Boatin on the line. Mr. Adade Boatin is the CEO of TechSpring Limited. TechSpring is involved in telecommunication. They are one of the you know, best um, value-added service providers in Ghana here. And he's going to tell us more about 5G, all that we need to know. He's an expert in the field. So let's listen to what he has to say. I have him on Zoom right now. So hello, Mr. Adede Boatin. Hello, Pastor. Oh, happy to have you here today. Thank you very much. So grateful. We, we want to take a few moments of your time to help us, you know, understand what is really happening as far as um, 5G is concerned. Our listeners are concerned about the fact that 5G is coming out. Some are thinking that 5G has, any, uh, has a link with coronavirus and <clears throat> technology is the mark of the beast and all that. We want to know, since you have uh, been in the, in the industry, in the telecommunication industry, you want us to help us. What is 5G? Well, thank you very much, Pastor. Um, we've, we've been in this industry for quite some time now. Um, as you already know, I'm the CEO of TechSpring Company Limited, and we, we provide um, value-added service for the telecommunication companies. So back to your question, um, what is 5G? Yeah. Um, basically, 5G is a mobile network with highly incredible speed, um, mm -hmm. which is so powerful than 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G. And um, 5G is basically designed to connect people, connect devices, connect machines at, at tremendously high speed. And so that is why 5G was, was designed or was created. Okay. That, so basically, 5G is a mobile network. As we basically, 5G is a mobile network. Yes, or like okay. um, like 4G. 5G is merely okay. a mobile network. Okay. How is it different from the 4G that we have now? Okay. Now you realize that 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G operates within um, um, from one to five gigahertz, um, meaning okay. that they have some kind of speed. But for okay. 5G, 5G operates within 24 to 90 gigahertz, meaning that 5G is, fast, is far more faster than okay. the rest of them. So they are all um, non-ionizing non um, radio frequency, but the 5G is basically more faster than the rest because of its high frequency that it's operating. Okay. So basically 5G, if I understand you, is a fast internet connection. That's right. That's, That's right. As we, all, as we all want. <laughs> yes, as we all want. We all want to connect to people, we want to do more download, fast downloads. Faster. And if you are communicating with somebody, you don't want breakages and all that. So 5G is actually designed to make sure we have faster connections. Okay. I believe if we have 5G now, our call would have been smoother than we have now. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We would have had more smoother um, communication than the other networks, than the other... Um, um, so, Mr. Ade, let me ask again. Um, would, would 5G be connected to human beings through chip implants as well? All right. Um, you know, first of all, 5G is a technology um, mm -hmm. like, like 4G. And mm -hmm. with every kind of technology, um, human beings take advantage of that technology to make their lives easier or better. And mm -hmm. so, even with the 4G that we have, yes, we have some kind of implant or chips that is able to trace machines or is able to trace even vehicles or trace aircraft and all that. And so if 5G should come into the picture, what it means is that we'll be able to do much of this tracking or much of this tracing better. Um, yes, you hear around that 5G with the inception of or as 5G is coming about, um, we'll be using um, chips to be tracing human beings. Yes. Um, because a technology, some might take advantage of that technology, but the design of the 5G is not to, to implant chips in people and to track people. No. 
Okay, so it's just a mobile technology that we it's should. Just a mobile. We technology. should be happy that it's coming. We should be happy. Five G is coming. Basically, we should be happy it's coming. But what what about health hazard? I mean, do they pose any health risk and all that? Especially, um, is it connected to coronavirus? Okay. All right, let me come to the health hazard and then we'll now go to we'll dive deep into the coronavirus. Um, you know, first of all, radio frequencies are into are grouped into two main categories: um, okay. ionizing um, radio waves and non-ionizing radio waves. Um, okay. With the ionizing radio waves, um, those radio waves have the potential of causing genetic mutations or even breaking chemical bonds. So a typical ionizing radio wave is an X-ray or um, gamma rays. Okay. Now, 5G is a non-ionizing radio wave, meaning okay. that it cannot cause DNA mutations or cannot break chemical bonds. Okay. As a matter of fact, some of the rays from the sun, the electromagnetic rays from the sun, are some, some of them are even harmful than the 5G. Now, oh, okay. Because 5G is unable to travel on a very far um, spectrum or it cannot travel far, you will need more cell sites or more boosters to be able to boost the signal. Yeah. And so yeah. researchers, scientific research shows that um, ab about every three to five buildings will need a cell site. Okay. And so it is the numerous cell sites that we are afraid that in a very small area, you might have about 20, 30 cell sites in a small area. So it is these cell sites that we are afraid that cumulatively can cause some kind of health risk. But one cell site, two cell sites, or three cell sites, or even five cell sites cannot cause any harm to, to any human being. And so um, we should all relax. 5G is not a monster. 5G is something we should all dream of because of what we have to do in the future. Now, you also hear of coronavirus and 5G is causing the cause of coronavirus and all that. As a matter of fact, um, we have not been able to find out that coronavirus, the cause of coronavirus is from a wave, a radio wave or radio frequency. Okay. And um, um, for example, if we are to, if I'm to drop a nuclear bomb in your area, we will be able to trace the rays even years after the, the devastation had happened. We, we can be able to trace the rays. But we are unable to trace that coronavirus has certain kinds of rays. That is why we are, we are being sick. And so if I, if I hear this argument that coronavirus is, is perhaps from um, 5G, sometimes it's so difficult for me to understand. It doesn't make scientific sense. Coronavirus is, has got nothing to do with 5G, basically. Wonderful. So basically, it has nothing to do with 5G. It has I mean, nothing it has to, do to do with 5G. coronavirus. We know, we've heard what World Organization said, coronavirus came from, you know, certain animals and all that. Yeah. And so, Mr. Adede, we want to thank you so much. I think this has been an eye-opener. We now know that radio frequencies have been categorized into two ionizing and non-ionizing. And thank God, 5G has nothing to do with um, causing genetic mutation or, or not. Exactly. So we want to thank you so much for your time exactly. and we pray that we would have more of you at the time. Thank you very much, Pastor. I'm so grateful. And stay safe. Wash okay. your hands. Make sure you eat well, you rest well and have fun. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Have a nice day. So my dear friend, that is the truth. There is nothing to fear about technology. Technology has been with us and it keeps, you know, evolving. It keeps advancing. It keeps getting better and better. Listen, a couple of years ago, we, 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 we didn't even dream that there would be a time where I could speak to you from, from our studio here in Winnipeg, in Ghana. And you watch us and listen to us from every part of the world. But this technology is here. I had something funny Somebody sent me something funny on Facebook, which I'm yet to research if it is indeed um, true. That somewhere in the 1800s, when streetlights were introduced or being introduced to, to certain parts of the United Kingdom, some people resisted, some Christian groups resisted, saying that it would actually affect the natural order of God. That God has created daytime 
and there is a sun and night time there is the moon so if you all of a sudden bring um how do you call it street light to light up the streets in the night it is going to affect other people's sleep and it's going to disrupt the natural order which means that we would not be able to know the difference between day and night. That is funny. I'm yet to find out whether it is indeed something that is true. But you see, that is how we have been. We always resist change. We always kind of fight against new things that are coming up. Technology in itself and anything that man has made comes with its side effects. And that is it. Everything that man has made comes with a side effect. That is all that we can say about that. Vehicles that we use is good for transportation, but it has a lot of side effects. You know, the number of people who die every year from road accident, from vehicle accident, is so much. But we cannot base on that and say that it is evil or it is a mark of the beast or whatever it is. So let's take that. But before you even take my words for it, I want us to understand from the Bible now, when you understand how the Bible describes who the Antichrist is, what the sex sex is all about, then it will actually help you to clear your mind from all these conspiracy theories. Listen, this is important. The reason why many people are buying into conspiracy theories is because they have actually closed the Bible. Some of these conspiracy theories are sweet to listen. Sometimes they have some sources from people in power and all that, but you need to always connect it to the Bible. Otherwise, you would have a problem. And it will surprise you to know that once you understand from the Bible's point of view, most of these conspiracy theories will not make sense anymore. So let's get to the Bible and know what the Bible says so that we we live with hope, knowing that our God has everything in perfect control. Now, before we get into identifying who the Antichrist is and what the sex sex is all about, there is something I want to share with you, the rare Bible truth about COVID-19. People are asking, is the COVID-19 in the Bible? Is this something that is saying that the world has come to an end? Is it in the Bible? Yes, my dear friend, coronavirus is right there. In the Bible it will surprise you but it is in the Bible it is not specifically mentioned in the Bible as coronavirus now when you read Luke chapter 21 verse 11 listen to what Jesus Christ said would happen prior to his coming understand that these are prophecies that are talking about things that would happen that would indicate that the second coming of Jesus Christ is near and in Luke 21, verse 11, Jesus Christ said, There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilence in various places, and fearful events, and great signs from heaven. Did you get that? Jesus Christ said there will be great earthquakes. We have been witnessing a lot of earthquakes. It says there will be famines. Yes, there are a lot of famines taking place in various parts of the world. People dying from famines each and every single day. But... Jesus said, apart from the earthquakes and the famines, there would also be pestilence. Pestilence. Now, what is pestilence? I tried to find a definition in the, in the dictionary, and I used the Merriam-Webster dictionary, as you can see on the screen. It would interest you to understand that from the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it says a pestilence is a contagious or infectious epidemic, this epidemic disease that is virulent and devastating. So basically, pestilence is a disease. Any disease that is so infectious that, you know, almost all the time becomes an epidemic. There are a lot of diseases that are not epidemic. They are not widespread like that. You know, it took some days, some time before the World Health Organization came out to declare that coronavirus is an epidemic. So any disease that is so infectious that is widespread according to the dictionary it's an epidemic and coronavirus is an epidemic it's a pestilence it's a pestilence that has you know plagued this world in these times that we find ourselves in what did jesus christ say jesus christ says one of the signs that would indicate that his coming is near not the coming has come there is a difference the signs in matthew chapter 24 are there to tell us that the coming or the end of the world is near. 
when they happen, no matter how serious they become, it doesn't mean the end has come. This is what you must understand. Otherwise, you would always connect every plague with the end of the world. But it would interest you to note that this prophecy has not just been fulfilled now. It, it has been fulfilled, and it keeps being fulfilled. Why hasn't Jesus Christ come? Because he said specifically in his word that it does not mean the end has come. If you look at what is on the screen right now, I actually got this from a website called Visual Capitalist, you know, where they actually indicate some of the pandemics that this world have what has, has witnessed. And some of them are quite serious. I, I can't mention all of them to you, but we have the, how do you call it, HIV AIDS, which came up somewhere in the eight, 1981 to present day. It has killed almost 35 million people, okay? It, we, some years back, around 1855, we had the third plague that killed about, you know, 12 million people. And in the 17th century, we had the Great Plagues killing over 3 million people. In between 57 to 1958, we have the Asian flu that killed 1.1 million people. So you can understand that what we have seen as far as coronavirus is concerned, con compared to some of the plagues or the epidemics that this world has seen, coronavirus comes nowhere to them. I am nowhere discrediting its devastating effect, but I'm only letting you understand that greater pandemics of a sort have taken, past, have taken place in the past and the world didn't come to an end because Jesus Christ said that when they happen, it is a sign that the end is near. It is, it is not a sign that the end has come. Otherwise, HIV would have even ended the world. Or the third plague that took place in 1855, 12 million people would have ended the world. Currently, as I speak, there are over almost 100,000 deaths from the coronavirus. That is nowhere compared to some of the things or the epidemics that, or pandemics that the world you know, has witnessed in the course of history. If you look at here in 1918, H1N1 pandemic, you know, killed over 675,000 people. It has been like that up to where we live now. What I'm saying is that pandemics of a sort are what the Bible said would happen. So as a Christian, when we begin to see, or as Christians, when we begin to see some of these things taking place, when, when they, they increase in subsection, the number of deaths increases and all that. It is a sign that you must be ready because very soon Jesus Christ will come and the world as we know it would come to an end. But you must never conclude that because there is a pandemic and countries have been locked down and there is chaos and panic, never conclude that it means the world has come to an end. That is what you must understand. Listen to what Jesus Christ again said. In Matthew 24, verse 6, this is a very important verse that I wish you write it down. Matthew 24, verse 6, listen. It says, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It says, you hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see that you are not troubled. Other translations will say that, see that you do not panic. Never let this one cause you to panic or to live in fear. Because these things must happen. But the end has not come. That is the truth of the Bible. Coronavirus is a sign that the world would come to an end pretty soon. But it does not mean that the world has come to an end. We must have the difference clear in the Bible. Now, dear friends, before Jesus Christ actually comes, what must happen is that the Antichrist must first be revealed. Now, this is very, very important. We'll try and understand this right now. The Antichrist must first be revealed. There is a prophecy in the Bible that actually says that before Christ comes, the Antichrist must be revealed. He has to come and work and do what he has to do before Christ comes. You want to know that prophecy, right? Then take your Bibles. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verses 3 to verse 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 to verse 4. By the way, if you have not shared the video yet, please do so right now because we are getting deeper into Bible prophecy. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. It says, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, 
For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. It continues to say, he would oppose and would exalt, over, exalt himself over everything that is called God or worshipped so that he set himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Now you must understand seven key words here. The first one is that there will be a rebellion first. The Apostle Paul says the end will not come until the rebellion occurs first. There must be a rebellion. Number two, it says the man of lawlessness must be revealed. The man of lawlessness must be revealed. Again, verse 3 continues says that that man of lawlessness would oppose and exalt himself above everything that is called God. Which means that whoever the Antichrist is will be somebody who would take the worship that is due God to himself. It will be somebody who would not be just a political leader, but it will be somebody who has ecclesiastical power, has religious power as well. You see, if you miss this, you would end up pointing the wrong person as the Antichrist. We must always take the Bible how it says and, and try to let the Bible interpret itself so that we don't have any problem. It says he would oppose everything that is called God and he would set himself up in God's temple. You see? So right from here, you know that a politician cannot be the Antichrist. Except that politician set himself up in God's temple and proclaim himself to be God. A politician cannot be that. Politicians mostly, yes, yeah, some of them are greedy and all that. But they do not interfere with religious affairs. But any time a human being has political power and also sets himself up in the church, in the temple of God, and says, I am God on earth, that is the Antichrist. And we want to go through the Bible prophecy, especially Daniel and Revelation, to identify who the Antichrist is and find out if the Antichrist is yet to come or has already come. Once we know that, then we would know the mark of the Antichrist because the beast is the same as the Antichrist. We want to know the mark and how you can avoid it. This is a lesson you must not miss. You must not miss at all. So let's continue. Now, some of the key words that I mentioned. One, rebellion. The Bible says the rebellion must first take place. What is rebellion? From the dictionary, rebellion or uprising is an act of armed resistance to an established government or leader. Whenever somebody rises against the government, rises against an established order, you are a rebel. You know that already. It also refers to open resistance against the orders of an established authority. So it doesn't necessarily mean the government, but wherever there is an agreed principle, an established authority, and one person decides to go against that, that person is a rebel. For example, now there is a lockdown in various countries. I don't know your country, but in Ghana here, the capital and then the, the, the second largest city in Ghana, Kumasi, I don't know if I'm right, they, these two cities have been locked down because these are places where the virus has been you know, hard hit. If you decide to leave your house, in these two towns that I'm talking about, you have decided to go against the established order of the government that we should all stay in our homes. And that means you are a rebel. And the Bible says, the rebellion must first take place before Jesus Christ comes. So which rebellion are we talking about? Let's continue. You understand the kind of rebellion the Bible is talking about. Now, according to the Bible, this is also very important. Satan was the first person or was the first known rebel in the Bible. It is funny, but that is what the Bible says. In fact, when you read Revelation, it tells us that the devil rose against the government of God. He said in his heart that I will be like God. And as a result, the Bible makes us understand from Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, that war broke out in heaven. Michael and the correct angels, those who did not defect to the side of the devil, stood and then they fought against Satan and all the defected angels who were one third of the total angels in heaven. Because of his rebellion, it led to a war in heaven. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, that he and all those defected angels were cast out of heaven because of their rebellion. They were sent out of heaven 
because they stood against the principles of God. And so Satan is the first known rebel in the world. That is what the Bible says. Now, let's continue. You understand why the Bible says the rebellion must first occur. You see, when you go to the book of Genesis, the second known rebellion took place in the book of Genesis, especially Genesis chapter 11. And that is where the Tower of Babylon was built. You see, the Tower of Babel was a sign of man's rebellion against God. This is very important. When you read Genesis chapter 11, verses 3 to 4, it says, They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. So this attempt was led by a man called Nimrod. This is important, you must understand. Nimrod gathered the whole world together and they built a tower. The height of the tower was so tall to them, it says, let's build it to, to reach the heavens, basically to reach the, sky, the cloud. Now, when God realized the attempt of fallen man to bring themselves together instead of scattering to, to subdue the earth, God descended and brought judgment. What did God do? The Bible says he confounded the language of the people. They had one language then, but their language was confounded. You can read about all of these things in Genesis chapter 11. When the language was confounded, they could not come together to build the ark or the tower, and so the idea was brought to an end. But guess what? After God dispersed them, the place where the attempt to bring the world together took place where they were building the tower. That place was renamed or named Babel. Babel means confusion. This is a very important word in Bible prophecy. The place was called Babel. And so, my dear friend, from our discussion, we can easily conclude that rebellion means Babylon or Babel, aka confusion, because Nimrod gathered the people against God. They actually rebelled against the order of God. They said, let's come together and make name for ourselves. And God judged them and dispersed them. And the place was called Confucian, otherwise known as Babylon. And so Babylon is Confucian or is rebellion against God. Now listen, the reason why I'm bringing the word Babylon is that in the book of Revelation, Babylon is used, as mentioned, to represent religious confusion. This is important. Babylon started way back in Genesis. Okay, it appeared again in a town led, or a kingdom led by a powerful king called Nebuchadnezzar many years later after the attempt of Nimrod, right? Now, according to history, Nebuchadnezzar also established his kingdom, which he called Babylon, at the exact location where Nimrod built the Tower of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also tried to bring the entire world together for a worship that is not the worship of true God. We know what happened. God judged him later on. Nebuchadnezzar himself repented and all that. And so Babylon, in the book of Revelation, or in Bible prophecy, signifies religious confusion. It signifies various religious beliefs coming together to offer a worship that is against the principles of the word. Understand something once again, that according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, the prophecy that we are trying to find in the beginning, it says the Antichrist or the man of sin will put himself in the temple of God and call himself God. So it stands to reason why the Bible makes us understand that in the last days there will be religious confusion. The Bible predicts that there is going to be a confusion between the religions of the world and the state. What is going to happen is that world churches and the state government are going to come together. Now this is no conspiracy theory. This is what the Bible says. Okay, And I want us to understand what I've just said. Not from posts on Facebook, but from the Bible. Okay, so if you are ready, let's go to Daniel chapter 7. This is very, very important. 
Daniel chapter 7. That, that, is, that is where we are going to get all the information for this particular study. Daniel chapter 7. Okay. Now, in Daniel chapter 7, we are going to come across a lot of quotes, a lot of symbols, like some military you know, stuff here. There are a lot of symbols being used here and there. And all the symbols in this prophetic book have been explained right there in the Bible. Now, in the book of Daniel chapter 7, the prophet Daniel had a dream. And there was a vision. In the vision, Daniel said he saw four um, beasts coming from the sea. Let's read what he said. Daniel chapter 7, verses 2 and 3. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds were stirring up the great sea. Daniel said in a vision, he saw the four winds stirring up the sea. All right. What happened? Let's continue to read. And four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. My dear friend, whenever you are reading Daniel or Revelation, you must make sure that you don't miss any word. Every word is important. When you read Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, it says that the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God gave to him, and he sent to his servant, and he sent and signified it. The word signify the right in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, makes us understand that the messages of Revelation, as well as that of Daniel, were communicated using symbols. And because of that, when you are reading each text, either in Daniel or in Revelation, you must pay particular attention to the word. You hear normal words or household items or things that we know of, but they don't mean the same as we understand. They have different meanings, and those meanings are all found in the word of God. This is important. The reason I'm saying that is, Daniel said, I saw four great beasts. That is one symbol. The beasts were coming up from the sea. The sea is also another symbol. You may think that before Christ comes, there will be some strange beasts appearing from the Atlantic Ocean. If you don't understand that the Bible is communicating to us using symbols and code, you would interpret them literally and you end up having problems. I remember when we were kids, we didn't know so much. We had a lot of people telling us so many things about the book of Revelation and Daniel, particularly myself. I remember I was told by one teacher that before Jesus Christ comes, there will be some strange beasts will come. They will have horns. They will torment those who have refused to accept the mark of the beast. They will use their horns to remove your intestines and all that. They were so scared. We were afraid and all that. It is funny that you interpret the Bible that way. But once we grew up and read the Bible for ourselves, we realized that, hey, these are symbols. They are not necessarily to be taken literally. That is one thing you must understand. So if that is the case, then what is the meaning of the sea? Because Daniel said, I saw the four great beasts coming up out from the sea. What does the sea mean? Let's read the Bible. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. The answer is right there. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. It says, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sowest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So, my dear friends, whenever you come across sea or water in Bible prophecy, it is telling you that we are talking about a highly or a densely populated area. Water or sea represent people, it represents nation, it represents multitude, it represents tongues, it represents where there are many people. So Daniel said, I saw four great beasts coming out from the sea. So in other words, Daniel saw four beasts coming from a densely populated area, specifically a big city or a big nation. Now let's continue. You understand the, the beast that he's talking about. It says there are four great beasts coming out from the sea. So what is the meaning of the beast? In Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, the Bible also unlocks the symbol of the beast for us. It says, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So from Daniel 7 verse 23, we also get to understand that a beast is a symbol for a kingdom. That is amazing. So if you go back to Daniel 7 verse 3 to apply them, 
then you understand that Daniel's vision is basically telling us that he saw four great nations appearing from an already populated area. That is what it's all about. And listen, you'd understand it as you continue. Now, Daniel explains each beast to us. Before we go there, when you go back to Daniel chapter 2, all right, in Daniel chapter 2, the Bible makes us understand that King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, all right? He had a dream, and in the dream, he saw a huge image. The image was made of different mineral composition. The head was made of gold. The chest and arms were made of silver. The thighs, you know, were made of bronze. The legs were made of iron, and the feet were made of iron mixed with clay. Now, God, through Daniel, interpreted the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, and he explained that the head of gold represented the kingdom of Babylon. So realize that in various, in different instances, and based on a particular context, God uses different symbols to kind of talk about the same thing. We just find out in Daniel 7.23 that a beast is a symbol for a nation. But when you go back to Daniel chapter 2, uh, the, the, uh, uh, an image made of different compositions also talks about kingdom. And in Daniel 2, the head of the image, which was made of gold, according to Daniel, represented the kingdom of Babylon. My dear friends, because of time, we may not be able to go to Daniel 2. So I encourage you, take your time to read the entire chapter of Daniel 2 and understand the prophecy there because it is linked to what we are about to talk about. Daniel continued to say that after you, Nebuchadnezzar, another kingdom will come. And from history, we understand that the kingdom that overtook the kingdom of Babylon was the kingdoms of the Medes and the Persians. That was the second kingdom. Daniel said, after you, there will be a third kingdom. And the third kingdom, as we know, was the kingdom led by Alexander the Great. That is the Grecian Empire. They were the ones that took away the Medo Persian Empire and then became the next third world empire. After the third empire, then Rome, the most powerful empire that this world has ever seen, also appeared on the scene. They were represented by the legs of iron. But Daniel said that after you, the fourth kingdom, after the fourth kingdom, there will not be another worldwide empire. And so if you look at the image according to the Bible, Daniel described that the feet is made up of a mixture of clay and iron. And just as you cannot mix these two together, after Rome, there will not be a one world government again. Now with that in mind, let's continue with our discussion on Daniel chapter 7. We are trying to identify from the Bible who the Antichrist is. Because once we know the Antichrist, then we'll know what 666, which is the mark of the Antichrist is. Then we'll know that it, is, it has absolutely nothing to do with a microchip or coronavirus or 5G technology or whatsoever it is. So let's continue. You understand? Now in Daniel chapter 7, verses 3 to 4, Daniel then explains the images that he saw in the vision one by one. And understand that these image or these, uh, these beasts that he saw, they are all kingdoms. They are four kingdoms. I just want to summarize everything. They are four kingdoms. And these four kingdoms, my dear friends, are the same as the four kingdoms that Daniel explained to King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2, through that image. And so in Daniel 7, verse 30 to 4, he says, The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. My dear friend, that beast, as you can see here, that beast is the kingdom of Babylon. Remember, I explained from the Bible that a beast is a symbol for a kingdom. That beast is a symbol or the, represent the kingdom of Babylon, which rose to power in 605 BC and came to an end in 539 BC. It says the eagle wings at the back of the, of the, of the lion represent the speed at which Babylon conquered the world. So that is why you have that. So everything on the image or the beast there has a meaning. Now let's continue. And suddenly, verse 5 of Daniel chapter 7, And suddenly another beast, a second like a bear, it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And it was said to it, 
arise and devour much flesh. My dear friend, this is the second kingdom that, according to Bible prophecy, was supposed to appear in the world. And we know that as Babylon rose from 605 and came to an end in 539 BC, Babylon ended when it was attacked by the Medes and the Persians. The Middle Persian kingdom is represented by the bear with three ribs in its mouth. That is, that is what the Bible says. And you realize that in the text, it says there were three ribs in the mouth of the bear. Those three ribs represent the principal cities that was conquered by the Medes and the Persians. These cities were Lydia, um, now known as Libya, Babylon, and then Egypt. These are the three principal kingdoms that the Middle Persians conquered or took from the Babylonian Empire. Now let's continue. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 6, Daniel said, After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. My dear friends, this is a description of the Grecian Empire, which took over the world in 331 BC to 168 BC. This kingdom was led by a very young, powerful warrior called Alexander the Great. Remind, it says that the leopard-like beast had four wings on its back like a fowl. You see, wind represents speed. It actually talks about the speed at which Alexander the Great conquered the entire known world. He was young. He was powerful. He took so short of a time to conquer basically the entire known world, and they all came under the Grecian Empire. Now let's continue. It's getting interesting right here. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 7, Daniel said, After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong and exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. This is something strange. The reason why I'm saying it's strange is that the third beast, Daniel said, it was like a lion. The second beast, he said, it was like a bear. The third beast, he said, it was like a leopard. They are not necessarily a bear, a leopard, and a lion. They look like them, which means Daniel was able to identify these beasts. But when it came to the fourth beast, Daniel was not able to identify this beast with any known creature or animal in his time. He only said, this beast was dreadful and terrible exceedingly. He had great iron teeth, and he devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet. This is strange. We know that after the Grecian Empire, the next one world government or one world kingdom that came to the world was none other than the powerful Roman Empire. The Roman Empire came into scene from BC 168 and then ended in AD 476. That is the Roman Empire. It was during the Roman Empire that Jesus Christ was born. It was, remember when Christ was born, um, when Christ, Mary had got pregnant, there was an order that everybody should go to his or hometown to be numbered. That was the time of the Roman Empire. It was during the time of the Roman Empire that Jesus Christ was crucified. The Roman Empire was the fourth powerful kingdom that ruled the world. Now, with this in mind, now I want you to understand something here. In Daniel 7 verse 7, Daniel said, This fourth beast had ten horns. I want you to underline that in your Bible. It had ten horns. Now listen to what Daniel said again in Daniel chapter 7, verse 24. This is where it begins to make sense. This is where Daniel begins to talk about the man of sin as prophesied in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Listen, it says, The ten horns are the ten kings who, who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. Daniel said there are four creatures that he saw in a vision. The fourth one was a different kind of creature, not like any creature he knew in the world. It had iron teeth and ten horns. But Daniel said 
These ten horns are ten kings that would appear in the world. But among them, a smaller horn would appear. This is interesting. A smaller horn would appear. That horn would be different from the ten horns on the fourth beast. And that little horn that would appear would destroy three horns, three of the ten horns. It would uproot them from the root. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8. It says, I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the root. And it says, And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. When you read other translations, it says, And a mouth speaking blasphemous words. This is strange. This fourth beast had ten horns. And all of a sudden, according to Daniel, a little horn came up. That little horn uprooted three of the ten horns and took them away. But this little horn, unlike the first ten horns, this one was different in the sense that it had eyes like the eyes of a man. It had a mouth that speaks blasphemous words. This is strange. What kind of a horn is this? A little fact I want you to understand about this little horn is that it came up among the ten horns, okay, of the four beasts. It destroyed three horns, and then it has eyes and a mouth like that of a man. He speaks blasphemous words against God. Before we continue, I want you to understand what a horn stands for. Remember, we are talking about symbols and quotes here. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 24, the Bible says, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So from Daniel 7 verse 24, my dear friend, the horn symbol has been unlocked. And that means a horn is a symbol for a king or a kingdom. It says, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings. A horn is a symbol for a king or a kingdom. Just the, the little horn, my dear friend, is the man of sin. That was prophesied by the Apostle Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. The little horn is the man of sin. So the question is, if we are saying the little horn is the Antichrist or the man of sin, what or who is the little horn? Okay. Before we understand or identify the little horn, there is another symbol in Bible prophecy, specifically in the book of Revelation, that has been used to describe the same power that Daniel used a little horn to describe. Interesting. The reason why I'm trying to connect all these dots is that some people take the verses out of context. They take Daniel chapter 7 out of context and explain it differently. And they take the revelation that also describes the same thing out of context and describe it differently. And they arrive at different conclusions and always point to a wrong antichrist. We want to connect all the dots together so that we arrive at a better conclusion. Okay, so let's continue. We want to identify what or who is the little one. That power that uprooted three other kings from, it or from their roots. Now, when you go to the book of Revelation... The book of Revelation actually uses a woman to represent or to refer to the little horn. Interesting. A woman. All of a sudden, we see a woman in the picture. The reason why it uses a woman is that according to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2, a woman is a symbol for a church. This is very important. Remember in Isaiah chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 onwards, it makes us understand that a time will come when seven women will go after one man, saying that we will buy our own food, we will buy our own clothes, just put your name on us. Some people will take this verse and then translate it literally and end up by saying a time will come where there will be so many women that women will actually fight over men. That is not how it is. A woman in Bible prophecy is a symbol for a church. So in that particular verse that I just read, Isaiah chapter 4, it is talking about the fact that time will come where people would actually, that there will be churches, listen, there will be churches that would buy their own food. That is the word of God. 
Jesus Christ said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So food there represents the word of God. So we buy our own food, which means they will not preach from the word of God. They will have their own kind of word. We buy our own clothes, how they appear, their own holiness, their own form of spirituality. Just put your name on us. That prophecy, my dear friend, has been fulfilled though. Today, we have churches that preach messages that have nothing to do with the word of God. In Ghana here, we have churches where people have, are called to come for little numbers, not in the word of God. Where people are called to do things that are, I can't even talk about here. They have the name of God on them. They still call themselves Christian churches. They still use the Bible, but they don't preach the word. They have their own food. Never think that that means that a time will come where there will be many women. So you get, every man will get some women. That, that is not how it is. I'm just setting this example so you understand that in Bible prophecy, a woman is a symbol for a church. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with a child, cried, Traveling in birth and pained to be delivered. Now, dear friend, this woman that I just read in Revelation chapter 12, okay, is the symbol for the pure church of God. This woman represents the pure church of God. So, in Bible prophecy, there are two women. The first woman is just what I, what I just read in Revelation chapter 12. The second woman is found in Revelation chapter 17. They all appear differently, each dressed in a different way altogether. Listen to what it says. In Revelation chapter 17, verses 3, it says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, on the lion scarlet beast. The woman, which represents a church, was, was sitting on a beast. A beast represents a kingdom. Remember I made you to understand earlier, that whoever the Antichrist is will not be a political leader, just a political leader, would have religious power as well. Now, Revelation is trying to let us understand that a woman which is a church, in Revelation 17, says this woman, which represents a church, was sitting on a beast, which is a kingdom. This is very important. And the, it said the beast was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Remember back in Daniel chapter 7, the fourth beast had ten horns. The fourth beast had ten horns. I hope you are getting the connection now. It is so easy to understand this prophecy. It says, the woman had, the beast who had ten horns. You see, this harlot woman of Revelation chapter 17 represents the false system of religion. My dear friend, the truth must be told. In the last days, there will be two main Christian religions. It will be just like it happened when Cain and his brother Abel were in the world. Cain was a worshipper of God. Abel was a worshipper of God. The Bible says in the process of time, they were required to offer a sacrifice to God. Cain worshipped God of heaven as Abel. But it happened that God rejected the sacrifice of Cain and accepted that of Abel. Why? And it was not because, listen, read the Bible where it was not because Abel, uh, sorry, Cain brought rotten tomatoes and rotten vegetables. No. If you read the Bible, Cain brought the best of his produce. He brought the best of the best to God, but it was rejected. Abel also brought the best of the best to God and was accepted. Why? Simple. Cain knew what God wanted. Sacrifice was not done with vegetables. You don't sacrifice to God with vegetables. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there will not be the remission of sin. They were to sacrifice for their sins, and it was not to be done with vegetables. It was to be done with an animal. But Cain worshipped God based on his own understanding, based on what he felt was good. But Abel worshipped God based on what God has said in his word. That was why Abel's sacrifice was accepted and that of Cain was rejected. In the last days, there will be two groups of worshippers. One group will worship God based on what God has said, exactly as the Bible says. Another group will worship God based on what my man of God has said. 
based on what my church teaches, based on what I feel is right, based on what I think is cool for me. That is what is going to happen in the world. And so there are two women. The, the, the pure church of God, if you read the description, would appear white. But the other woman appeared with a whole lot of you know, stuff all over her, and she was riding the beast. You see, the beast on which she rides represents the state. And so what is going to happen is that the little horn is a religious political power. The little one is not just a religious power. It's not just a political power. It is a religious political power. Let's continue to read in Revelation chapter 17. Verse 4 says, The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of the abominations of the filthiness of her fornication. You see, the golden cup in the hand of the woman represent the intoxication of a false doctrine. Wine in Bible prophecy represent doctrines, teachings. This woman, which is a church, would bring out so many false teachings in the world. And you understand, as we identify who this woman is, you understand the kind of teachings they brought in the world. False teachings. And many people will be drunk by the reason of her false doctrines. Many people will follow her. In verse 5 of Revelation chapter 17, it says, And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of Harlot, and the abominations of the earth. Remember Babylon, religious confusion, right here. Why is it religious confusion? Because they will bring teachings that are not from the Bible. And so literal Babylon, which took place in Genesis chapter 11, as well as, you know, the book of Daniel, the kingdom of Babylon, we now see the spiritual fulfillment in the book of Revelation. My dear friend, this is what the Bible says. False doctrines would come into the church through this false religious system called Babylon. Babylon is not America, as Rastafarians say. It's not white people, as Rastafarians would say Babylon. Every white man is a Babylon. It's not like that. Babylon in Bible prophecy represent false religious system. It's a confusion that will take place in the last days as a result of false teachings. And many people will be drunk with the wine of the woman. The wine represents false teachings. The woman was full of names of blasphemy. The woman had seven, seven heads and ten horns. Okay, The ten horns are just like that of Daniel chapter 7, the fourth beast. And so you can see similarities here. So it stands to reason that this woman, which is a church, was sitting on a beast. And the fourth beast we know was the Roman Empire. Understand that. The fourth beast was the Roman Empire. It is gone. The pagan Roman Empire is gone. But this beast or this woman is sitting on a beast with ten horns as the fourth beast as well. Okay? And so my dear friends, this is important because this actually fulfills what Daniel said. I mean, what the Apostle Paul said must be fulfilled before Christ comes. That is, the man of sin must be revealed. What would he do? According to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, it says, Don't let anyone deceive you. And my dear friends, living in 2020, there are so much deception out there. So much. So many conspiracy theories. But the Bible says, don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day, which day? The second coming of Christ. That day will not come until the rebellion occurs. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. Has the rebellion occurred? Yet the rebellion has occurred. So who is the man of lawlessness? You are yet to see. We will identify him right now. He continues to say, he would oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God. So as you have seen, this woman in Revelation chapter 17 had names called mystery, Babylon the Great, representing religious confusion. This woman, which is a church, would make himself like God to all the people. And she would cause people to be drunk with the wine of her false teachings. It's serious, my dear friend. It says, so that he set himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. My dear friend, the man of sin 
is the same as the little horn in the book of Daniel and is the same as the woman in red in the book of Revelation. The question is, who is this person? Who is this little horn? My dear friend, the answer is simple. It is the Antichrist that we know would come. It is the Antichrist. I know you are wondering, who is the Antichrist then? The Antichrist has been exposed. We need to understand this, okay? Somebody is asking now, who is the Antichrist then? You know, many people have pointed fingers to so many people in the world, pointing that they are the Antichrist. I kind of listed a few. I don't know if you can see. I've just put it on the screen for you, okay? Some years ago, people said Adolf Hitler was the Antichrist. Some also say the Pope is the Antichrist. But the question, which Pope? Is it Pope Benedict? Is it Pope Francis? Is it John Paul? We'll understand that. I want you to understand what we are talking about. So that whenever we mention who the Antichrist is, you understand that we are not referring to individuals. We are referring to a system, a power, a structure that has been put in place to work out something that that is against the principles and the word of God. Some say Emperor Nero. Emperor Nero was one of the most wicked emperors that the Roman Empire um, you know, had. Some say it was Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, some say it was Mikhail you know, Gabuhev of Russia. Some even pointed John F. Kennedy of America. is no more there as, um, as the Antichrist. And recently, um, just before he left office, Barack Obama was seen as the Antichrist. There are a lot of theories about Barack Obama on the internet. He was the Antichrist. There are WhatsApp messages, chain messages all over saying that Barack Obama's health law or health bill was going to make sure that there will be a chip implant so that anybody who receives a chip has received the mark of the beast. That is serious. We need to understand. Now you know that the Antichrist also has religious power. In fact, the Antichrist, whoever it is, would be a man of God. But I would explain, you understand. Would be a man who is seen by the world as a man of God, but would also be a man who has political power. And the world recognizes him as a political leader. Is there something like that in the world? You wait and see. There is. Recently, because of this coronavirus pandemic, and vaccines that are coming out, Bill Gates leading this, you know, this campaign. People have started attacking him that Bill Gates is the Antichrist. But Bill Gates is not even a political leader, nor is he a religious leader. So the question now we need to answer before we find who is the Antichrist is, has the Antichrist already appeared in the world or is yet to come? And again, will the Antichrist appear before or after the Great Tribulation? My dear friend, we at the Voice of Hope Media Ministry realize that we are living in the last days. And I know you also know that we are living in the last days. The reason why this message has come at such a time is that the Bible warns each and every one of us against receiving the mark of the beast. Now the beast you know is the Antichrist, not some animal. The Bible warns us against receiving the mark of the beast. This is important too. So for us to understand who the Antichrist is would help us to avoid taking his image or the beast. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 to 10, the Bible says, Then a third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured at full strength. Anybody who received the mark of the beast, you shall face the wrath of God. That is the truth. So if you know who the Antichrist is, ah, you would avoid taking his, his mark. But if you are misled into pointing the wrong person as the Antichrist, you end up taking the mark of the beast because you don't know who the real Antichrist is. The reason again that I'm teaching this is that God calls us in Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. He says, come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Very soon, God is going to pour serious plagues. The Bible calls it in Revelation as the seven last plagues. Coronavirus is nothing compared to the seven last plagues. Hmm. God is going to pour those plagues onto the world. Those who have received the seal 
of God will be protected. Just as God's people were protected in the land of Egypt when God poured the plagues on the Egyptians. But those who have not had the seed of God would automatically have the mark of the beast. So you understand that in the last days, just as there will be two groups of worshippers, there will be two types of marks. The mark of God and the mark of the beast. The one that you receive will determine where you spend eternity. The truth is that God is sealing his people. And the enemy is also working to make sure he takes as many as he can to be with him in hell. Because of time, this is what we're going to do. Now we have connected the dots from the book of Daniel chapter 2, the image there to the four beasts in Daniel chapter 7. Now we know that the little one that came from the fourth beast is the Antichrist. That little one is also described in Revelation chapter 17 as a woman sitting on a scarlet colored beast. And that beast in Revelation chapter 17 also had ten horns, which means that beast is the same as the fourth beast and so forth like that. Now you understand all of it. Now is the time for us to know who is this little home power that is represented as a woman in the book of Revelation. God willing, in our next presentation, which will come up tomorrow, we are going to cover and would understand. I am going to show you so many things that will shock you. It will shock you. Things that would leave you with with no doubt that this is the real biblical antichrist. And you know what the 666 is all about. So my dear friends, God bless you for joining us today. Make sure you join us tomorrow. It is, tomorrow's session is going to be serious. I pray, get data, get data and join us live tomorrow and then we would understand who the Antichrist is. Now you know, it has left for us to know and identify the rare personality or the rare power in the world currently. And I'm saying that power is not yet to come. That power is already in existence today as we speak. And that power is working mightily. So many things are happening. We need to know to avoid taking the, 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 the mark. So join me tomorrow, same time, right here on Voice of Hope Media, on Facebook, also on YouTube live on our online radio, and you are going to be blessed. May God bless you. If you have any question, please put a question in the comment box right now or send to our WhatsApp number on the screen. That is 0243-851-636. If you are outside Ghana, it is going to be plus 233-243-851-636. Get you know, in touch with us, and then you Will be blessed if you want to receive the audio of this presentation we can also give you the audio just send your name um, and say i want the audio of the presentation on whatsapp and then we will get it for you i also want to remind you that you can download our android app it is one of the best christian resource you can have today now that we are all at home get a voice of hope android app just search for voice of hope media on google play store we only have it on on, on android for now very soon we'll roll out the iOS version. But for now, just go to Google Play Store and then search for Voice of Hope Media. Download the app and it, the symbol, you can see on the screen now, you see the symbol how it is so that when you search, you know what you're looking for. Download it and it'll be a blessing. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much. You have opened our eyes to some of the most important truths in these last days. I pray the Lord as we reflect on this message, let your Holy Spirit be with us. Bless us so that we would know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Thank you very much for we have asked this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my dear friend. See you same time, 5 p.m. Ghana time, God willing, tomorrow as we continue with who is the Antichrist. Shalom.